Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to a match reaction show. It's finished. Chelsea nil, Fulham nil. What's all the fuss about? I mean, you know, Chelsea were, were, were not that great before the transfer window ended. They're not that great after, perhaps. Now, I, I, I think there's there's a lot more nuance to it. Um, It's a result that would disappoint Chelsea. I really thought Chelsea would be up for it. I really thought they would be up for it. And, you know, one the first five minutes, they probably were. But the thing is, Fulham were up for it as well. Fulham, I think, probably came to this game thinking, well, if Chelsea think we're just going to roll over, and they're just going to, you know, expect us to kind of be brushed aside. That's not going to happen. We're going to, we're here, we're going to fight. And we're going to make sure that Chelsea, even if they get a result, they're going to have to earn it. And I just felt that Chelsea, um, as the game went on, even in the first half, as the game went on, it was almost like the belief started slowly, slowly, slowly dissipating. I don't know what it was. Um, and the key players didn't perform that well. Um, the two the best chances that fell to, the, to Chelsea were both from balls over the top. The first one was a silver ball that reached to Ziyech, uh, sorry, not Ziyech, uh, Havertz. And Havertz puts it, um, in fact, I think the ball was from Ziyech, wasn't it? It went to Havertz and he put it on the post. Um, that was the first one from Ziyech. Actually, Silva also had a ball, but that was called offside. Um, but then Ziyech had the ball over the top that Havertz put on the post. A difficult chance. Um, and uh, those, those those happened. And then there was a ball over the top for Fofana. And Fofana probably should have scored that goal. That was the best chance of the game. I think he should have scored. Um, and you could say that was good defending. But you feel in a situation that a striker should be scoring a goal. I think he just couldn't sort his feet out as quickly as he wanted. But that was surprising, the fact that they had two good chances with balls at the top and they didn't try that that often. It was almost like there was a lot of playing um, on the wings. Like a third time the balls went out of the wings and it almost seemed like the, the attacks would die over there. Um, but, uh, I mean, credit to Fulham. You got to credit Fulham. Fulham, I think they played really well. Joao Polina was a standout in that midfield. We talk about how important CDMs are, uh, you know, and then there's a lot of talk about a CDM. Uh, in the Chelsea team, and I'll talk about him in a second, but uh, Palina was a standout in that midfield. He, he's, he's really transformed the Fulham midfield as well. I think not a lot of people talk about the effect that he's had, and the reason why Fulham are safe and probably not going to get relegated this season is because they've invested in a really qual real quality CDM like Palina. I think he's, he was fantastic. I'm surprised, uh, you know, no big club went for him because he definitely has some qualities that are, that are really, really um, uh, excellent. Uh, and very suited to that midfield, and he looks, he looks, he looks good today. Even despite picking up a yellow card in the twenty-first minute, he was still outstanding. He played well. He he still didn't shy away from making the tackles when he had to. Wasn't afraid to make the interceptions when he had to. Just has a very good reading of the game, and I like that about him. And I, and I enjoyed watching him uh, play, and and that and that really was the difference. I think the fact that Fulham's midfield four as a four, um, because you know they were playing four four one one basically, but sometimes again four four two. But that midfield four, Willian, uh, Reed, Reed, Deco Do Reed, and uh, Palinia, they really, uh, as a unit, they were very, very strong. And they made sure that Chelsea never counterattacked. Uh, they made sure that, you know, any opportunities that came for counters, they kind of stifled that. And because of that, there was not enough service for the wingers. There was not enough space for wingers to operate in. Um, a little bit disappointed with Modric playing, uh, playing the way that he played. The fact is, I was actually kind of surprised that CX started. I was surprised that Gallagher started. I was surprised that, Fina and that was for the for the, for the reasons of, of, of what happened with their transfers. Um, and I think ZX started because I think Potter was almost like, well, we, we didn't let you go to PSG, but here I'll give you a start. Because I think that might have been a little bit too hard to say, okay, like, have a start. Um, he did play well, though. ZX did play well, all kidding aside. Um, and I was surprised to see Enzo Fernandez start because I thought he might not play this game. But then again, you know, you pay a lot of money for a player. You, you want to get him into the team as quickly as possible rather than ease him in. Um, so th that was there. And, and I think Woodrick starting was, was interesting as well, but it just wasn't clicking. And I think the problem was the lack of a pro focal point. Um, I don't think Harvards is that player. I don't think Harvards is the sort of player who can be that focal point. Um, and they need a striker. I, I Fofana seemed, when he put up Fofana came on, he looked pretty good. He looked lively, he looked sharp. That missed chance aside, I think if Fofana had played maybe, you know, a longer period, maybe Fulham might have had problems. Um, so that is something for them to consider as well, that they need that focal point and maybe Havertz isn't that player. Um, and I thought Madiweki looked good as well. I know I know Nishikan said that Madiweki didn't pass the eye test, but I thought he looked very, very lively. Again, he was, like, probably it was because Mudrik wasn't that good. And so, you know, anything on, on him is an upgrade. But I thought Madiweki looked good and I thought Sterling looked good as well. So there are options. I think that's why we talk about depth, isn't it? When one player is not playing well, you just take him off, you bring someone else on. And, and it works. It worked in this instance over Chelsea. They've got insane depth. And then that is something that's really, really going to benefit them as the season goes. But um, then we come to Enzo Fernandez. And I've got to talk about Enzo Fernandez. 
I thought he was like he looked really good. Now Angad said, and Angad actually has a point. Angad said, if you watched that show before, Angad said that he's got to play it in a double pivot. And I agree. And I, I was like, ah, you know what? You know, he's actually an old-fashioned CDM. He doesn't need to play in a double pivot. But watching this game, I think he needs to play in a double pivot. Because as good as he was today, and he was very good, by the way. I think it was for a player who's playing his first game for a new club in a new league in a new country, someone who's still very young. I thought he had a really good game. And uh, I saw flashes. Of brilliance in his performance. There were some very nice passes, some very nice touches. He won the ball back quite a few times as well. He's got that ability. But I think Etling is a lone CDM. The one problem that he had that he had was that players were often, you know, they knew, okay, fine, he's the lone CDM. So we can kind of just run off him. And there were times when he was getting uh, double teamed and then players were kind of running past him because of the fact that he was playing as a lone CDM. And there were times when he misplaced his passes as well because he was playing deeper than he normally is used to. Because when he plays a lone CDM, you play much deeper than when you play in a double pivot. So I do agree. I mean, watching this game, I think I agree with Angad. I think shout out to Angad then. I think he's right. I think I think he needs to play on a double pivot. I think when he has a better midfield alongside him, because I don't think Gallagher or Mount are the answers in that in that uh, sort of, you know, if they're going to play midfield three. They need to play two better midfielders. Maybe him and Gante will, will be interesting to watch what happens. But when he has better midfielders down them, I think his game automatically will improve and you will see the impact that he makes in a team with better midfielders around him. Right now, I think um, in this game, just because of the fact that he was playing alongside Gallagher, he's playing on Mount. Mount is really off form, by the way. Uh, Gallagher wasn't that great either. Towards the end, he improved and he looked like a threat. But for most parts of the game, he really didn't look on it. So I think, you know, because of that, even as good as Fernandez was, the impact of his of his play was invisible. But I think when he has better players, better midfielders, I think you'll see the impact in his play. So that's something there. But I was, I was certainly impressed with his performance. Not 115 million pound impressed, but certainly impressed with his performance for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to see there's more to come from him. And, and I think Chelsea have signed a quality player. And then you've got to talk about um, Kukurea. And that's a player you've got to talk about, Kukurea. I thought today, of all the players who complete, who played, you know, 70, 80 minutes, I think he was by far the worst. I mean, a lot of people say Modric was poor. But I thought Kukurea just looked, just, just for me, Kukurea was a player that I don't know how he played 80 minutes in this game. Every time, I think the thing with Kukurea was he wasn't he wasn't bad defensively a, a, as a whole, but there were times when Tete was running off of him. There was times when Devko Dogavid was running off of him. Um, and then going forward, it was almost like that's the place where attacks go to die. A lot of his passes were misplaced. A lot of his passes were under hit, over hit. He just looked like a liability every time Fulham were every time Chelsea were attacking from that side, or every time Fulham were attacking from that side. He just looked like a liability, and I don't know what the answer is. I don't, I, and the thing is with him, I, I do feel he's a center, he's a third center back. He's a sort of a left sided center back in a back three. And sometimes when you're too much of a specialist, you can't play different positions. So he's not a left wing back. He's not a, you know, he cannot play really as a left wing back um, because he doesn't have the attacking ability. And I don't think he'll play as a left back either because I don't think he has, you know, because in a left back, again, if playing as a full back in the back four, you still got to be attacking. And I don't think he can play as a centre-back because um, in a two, I don't think he plays as a centre-back in a two because I don't think he's that defensively good. So he, his best position probably is a centre-back in a three. But if you don't play a three, there's really no role for him. So I, I will be intrigued to see what happens with him because Chelsea put in a lot of money and a lot of investments. So how do they get the best out of him will be something that that will be mindful of. Um, but but today, I thought he was, he was really poor. I think throughout the season, he's been poor. Um, and you got, and then maybe Graham Potter. I mean, again, you're gonna give time to Graham Potter. I think it is gonna take time for the team to tell. You can't really have knee jerk reactions. But uh, once again, we saw the one problem is it's okay to lose games. It's okay to draw games like today, and it's okay for a team to play better than you. That happens. That will happen. What is not acceptable for any, or should not be acceptable for any manager, is being outworked. And I thought today Chelsea were outworked by Fulham. You have to see the amount of running that they did. The amount of times that Chelsea, Fulham won the ball back in the final third, by the way, that's that's staggering if you look at those numbers. It was 6-1 to one at one point. I would be interested to see what the last numbers was, but the fact that they were outshining them in that department is something as a concern. And that is where I think Porter is going to have to focus on as well. It's the fact that if players are not trying hard enough, particularly when you're at home, particularly when there's a lift because of the new players that have come in, if that is not making you play better, I think that that is that is a serious problem. But gotta say, Fulham played really well today. Their tactics worked to a T. Uh, really, everything that they did and everything that Silva had planned, everything worked. The only issue was the goal scoring, and I think it was because Mod Mitrovic, his link-up play still leaves a bit to be desired. There were times he was clumsy on the ball. His passes were a bit under hit, over hit. That you know, and that's something that you get with the big target man. You do get somebody who can bully defenders and who can occupy defenders. But sometimes you do lose a little bit of that link-up play. 
uh, with some other limit of it. So that that's something that to think about as well for Fulham. But uh, I mean, they'll be happy with the point from Stamford Bridge away from home. You get a point, uh, uh, you know, Stamford Bridge still a very good point to get. I think I think uh, Fulham will definitely go by the happier side. Man of the match, I mean, you could pick Palina, you could pick Tete. I mean, I know uh, the, the commentators pick Kenny Tete as a man of the match, at least where I was watching. Um, they pick any Tete as a man match, but you can't really go wrong. I'm going to go with Palinia. And I think Tete had a really good game, but I think he was also helped by the fact that Kukurea had a pretty bad game. Um, and the fact that Mut- and maybe Mudrik also was not that good. And it's possible that Tete made Mudrik look bad. Um, but but I still thought, but I thought Tete was fantastic. I thought Palinia, because he was on a yellow card and yet he was still so brave and making all of those tackles that he made. And the fact is, he probably started a few tackles over, which probably, which Maybe Fulham could have taken more advantage of. I'm going to with, go with Palini. I will keep the theme of midfield generals and we'll say, it, uh, you know, Palini is well in the match. But let me in the comments. You can feel free to disagree with me uh, if you like and let me know what you think, of course. Uh, let me know what you thought about the game. I, I think it was a very tactical game uh, and uh, Fulham came out on top. Uh, not, not in terms of the result, but definitely in terms of the fact that uh, they would have probably wanted a point from this game just for the fact it was a home game. Um, I, I think Fulham out tactically out thought. Um, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, Silva, I think beat Potter that way, but uh, didn't get the result that he wanted. Of course, <laughs> not not the not not the win that he wanted, but he would have wanted. But nonetheless, anyway, let me know what you think of the game. Of course, share your comments uh, below. Uh, do subscribe to our channel, you. We've reached two hundred subscribers, so thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. But please do keep subscribing. Uh, you know, if you enjoy this stuff, we really want to do more shows, and your support really helps us in doing that. So please do subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook as well as Twitter, Instagram. Links are all in the description below. So please do follow us uh, for, for more content. Uh, take care. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.